with this draft class and with the hype that it's getting, is it is it living? It should you said it's going to live up to the hype, right? You said it's going to be one of the top top draft classes that we've probably ever seen. It's going to be up there. I think it's got a chance. Yeah. Okay. So if the Knicks were to move into like. The back end yeah. of this draft. Cause, cause like they I, traded. Uh, well, the, remember, the Pacers, they got 8, 26, and 29 in the first round. Yes. And that's where, that's where I was going. So with the Pacers, right? So let's say you go 26, 29. You still expect someone around that range to be that impactful on a team for someone like the Knicks? I think you can get value there, for sure. You know, I, I'm looking at a guy like Colby Jones, Big East guy out of Xavier, 6'5", 6'6". Six, six, six do it all guy improved his three point shooting this year had the the pleasure of breaking down film with him nice uh, just you know a uh, uh, really high IQ um and, and he's a guy you know I've did a statistical query where you know he's doing a little bit of everything with the you know rebound percentage assist percentage steal block the defensive stuff and it's a pretty powerful list of guys for outcomes that he could have which is Derek White uh Tyrese Halliburton was on the list James Harden was on the list um, you know, obviously he falls more towards that Derek White tier, in my opinion, but it's just a bunch of oh, Lonzo was on the it's a bunch of guys that are connecting pieces, glue guys. You know, he's got a little bit of Josh Hart in his game. You know, I think he's going to be a guy that people look at and they say he's boring. He is a little older. So his upside has, uh, you know, he doesn't have the, the kind of upside you project. But I don't know how you could say that after watching these playoffs and you see, you know, the the. Cody Martin uh, and and uh, Josh Hart and and all these guys that are that exact kind of player being so impactful. So that's a guy that in that range I think is going to be there because I think teams are going to swing on a guy like Gigi Jackson before that and and mm. hope that you know he hits and becomes a superstar. Uh, so there, there's definitely going to be value towards that at the end of that uh, first round for sure. Now I'm wondering because you know the Knicks and the Pacers we're talking about an Obi Top and trade at the deadline this year. Now, I don't know what type of player this Jerace Walker is, but I'm looking at Tankathon, and they have him going to the Pacers at number seven, and he plays the four. So I'm thinking, and and you got Taylor Hendricks going at eight. So, I mean, if, if the Pacers were to get one of these guys seven, eight, would, would, it, would a top and trade even, even make sense for the, for the Pacers? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, I think that's it's one of those two guys for the Pacers. Uh, unless those two guys are off the board, and they very well could be. Mm. Um, you know, I got Jarris fourth on my personal board. Um, that I've had him top five all year. He's a guy who played on a, a veteran Houston Cougars team that, you know, had a good good run this year. Won a ton of games, and he just played a role. Like, And, and when I think about him with Halliburton and Matherin and uh, and he's a perfect fit next to Miles Turner, who uh, you know was stretch big, and uh, he's the perfect fit there. Taylor Hendricks, another guy, mm-hmm. doesn't need the ball in his hands, just catch and shoot. You know, he, take advantage of, of the playmaking that those guys have. Um, it, it's hard. It would be hard for me to see them passing on either of those two guys because not only is the fit so clean, but those guys are two guys with a ton of potential. So. Um, it, to me, if either of those two guys are there and they kind of pass on it, I I don't even know what kind of swing they would take because the, it, it, the fit is like a glove, man. Mm. Now, so to uh, my guy Jay from East New York, fight out Super Chat. He says uh, the Knicks need a wing or a stretch five. Two players that will be in the second are Jordan Walsh and Tristan Vukcevic. What's the scouting report mm. on those two? Jordan Walsh, Tristan Vukcevic. Uh, well, if you're looking for shooting, you, you're not looking at it from Jordan Walsh. Um, mm. I could tell you that I like Jordan Walsh. I think that he's a guy in the second round that is definitely a worthy flyer. He's like six, eight, seven, two wingspan, phenomenal defender. He's going to be able to handle the physicality immediately. Um, but he plays pretty sped up. Mm. You know, he's like, He's like listening to a podcast at one and a half speed. Like, it's just, Oof. you know, it's no, it's like, it's tall. Like, you might actually be able to, you know, get hit, hit a couple you, you, of podcasts you, you, on your drive. I'm a one and a half speed kind of guy. <laughs> um, okay. 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 I got a lot of podcasts I got to listen to. You so got to get through it. You got to get through it. Have you ever tried two? No. Oh, no, no. Two so two deep. Crazy. Two so deep. Crazy. It's like the micro machines guy. Like, yeah, there's no way. There's no yeah, way. Yeah. Like Jordan Walsh ain't, ain't a two po- on podcast. Like he's playable, but sometimes he's just like, 
All right, we got to slow down sometimes because I yeah. just missed something. Yeah, I spaced out for a minute. I, I, I missed something. I got to <laughs> rewind. Um, the Vucevic is uh, to me. I'm I'm not a big Vucevic fan. You know, he's a guy. He had a, a little bit of buzz last year, um, and then his play tailed off. He came on this year. He he went to the combine. He had like ten or twelve points, like in a few minutes uh, in in the one game he played, and then he shut it down. I mean, he could shoot it space in the floor but defensively I, I i have concerns um you know i i don't think if he's a guy that you take at the end of the second round the middle of the second round like i get it you know it could be a good value play but uh i think that you know in the combine setting like if he just misses two of those shots uh you know he went two for four instead of four for four or whatever right like he still shoots 50 percent, but he doesn't look nearly as good i could see a world where a team drafts him and stashes him mm. um and goes that route but uh yeah he's i like i said not too many stretch fives in this draft he might be the best one and for me that that's saying something so you probably think maybe draft and stash yeah i mean and yeah. even if he comes over i don't think he's got the defensive yeah. chops to to find minutes on the floor for a winning team right yeah. like not not for tips no. <laughs> yeah, he's he's not playing there. Yeah, they're not picking him. Um, now, it was said that the Knicks, the only person that we know that the Knicks did interview, because the Knicks have been out there. They've been at CAA Pro Day. They've been at uh, the Combine. Gigi Jackson, power forward out of uh, South Carolina. The Knicks did interview him. Uh, what, what do you know about him? Gigi is going to be one of the most controversial players mm. in this draft. Um. He's the youngest player in the draft. He's eligible by two weeks. He reclassified. He was supposed to go to North Carolina and play there next year, but he reclassed and played at South Carolina. Mm. The, team, the team was terrible. He was terrible. I think he shot 37-32. Um, I had an NBA executive tell me, if you like players that take the absolute worst shots every time they touch the ball, then Gigi Jackson's the guy for you. Oh, Jesus Oh I t- <laughs> my God. <laughs> when we were having this conversation, I said that Gigi Jackson is going to be the Kevin Knox to somebody's Mikael Bridges. Oh, man. In, in that they are going to reach for his potential because you look at him physically and you're like, this kid was 17? And like, what? And you look at the highlights. Like, yo, if you look at his highlights, you're like, this kid's Jason Tatum. <laughs> like, he's knocking down tough mid-range shots. He's got a bag. But um, absolutely will never pass the ball. His pet like just won't do like he like I don't he didn't average one assist a game on oh the kind of God. usage that he had. Uh and and yeah, he's young, right? He's he's playing up a level, right? Kind of the opposite of the the Thompson twins. And mm-hmm. but so that you could at least use that as be like, well, the speed of the game is new to him, especially because he's a year behind developmentally. Um, so you gotta be pa- patient with him. <clears throat> but it's just one of those things when you watch him, you're like all the talent in the world, but the feel's just not there. And if you're a team, like he's a kid, like he needs those shots. He needs those reps. He needs the minutes on the floor. But I don't know what team is just going to throw him on the court and be like, all right, go do your thing. Like he's going to get drafted. He's going to spend some time in the G League. And who knows when he's going to be ready, if ever, to be the Mm -hmm. kind of player that teams want him to be. Like, you know, we see it all the time with these guys who are so highly ranked in high school because they were able to get buckets. And then they come Mm -hmm. in and it's Cam Reddish. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it's harder at this level. You got to match. You got to be elite at this stuff, and you got to be able to play off of other guys because there are so many talented players. And he hasn't shown that he could play off of other guys yet. So uh, if he's a swing, like it, th- he's being projected to go in the second now. So if if he falls to the second round, hey, that's a swing worth taking because you know you might hit a home run, but you take him early, you might strike out. So. Mm. It, that that's kind of the options. I don't, it, it's hard to to really picture too much of an in between with him. And with so for Gigi, right? You said he played poorly. The team played poorly. Why did the team play poorly? Is it like could he not perform because the team the rest of the team was playing badly as well, or or is it yeah, more it, so? I mean, he's playing in the SEC. You know, one of the the best conferences in college basketball. It's not like he was playing you know, in the whack or something with some college, whoever the F state that, you know, you know, that you never heard of. Um, (laughs) So he's playing in a real conference. He's young. The team's not, not that talented. They got, they're going up against 
talented teams every single night. College basketball has never been older. You know, DeAndre Williams in Memphis is 26 years old, and he's trying to get a, another year of college to be 27 playing college ball next year. Um, so because of COVID and getting that extra year, the grad year, you know, college basketball is super old. So there's a lot of reasons why maybe he struggled. Um, but at the end of the day, he probably would have been better going up to school next year, trying to, to figure out some of the stuff that he didn't figure out this year and develop at his own pace instead of rushing the process. And then he went to the combine. Um, you know, there's rumors that he was sick during his pro day workout, but mm -hmm. executives left saying that he looked lazy. He wasn't hitting shots. He wasn't going, you know, he was going through the motions. Mm. Um, he had an Instagram live at one point during the year where he was complaining that he wasn't the guy getting the final shots. And oh, he started man. coming off. That's good. Then he started. Yeah. He, then he got started getting brought off the bench after that. So, you know, there's just, there's a lot of red flags with maturity, Gigi. And, and look, he's, he's, he was 17, 18 years old handling this. Yeah. Right. But you still got to know that you're going to be under a microscope. This is, you know, the social media generation. So yeah. It's, you know, you, you got to know that these are the outcomes. You got to understand that. And and just like uh, Jalen Duran, um, you know, might have worked out doing the same thing, reclassing, maybe not being in the most ideal situation. He comes to the NBA. He's fine. You could also be Imani Bates where mm. you do go back and, you know, you, you just the hype was was overrated. Um, and I would lean more that way with Gigi than than the Jalen Duran route. Mm. Okay. Yeah, sounds sounds like a lot of red flags, man. But she sounds like a keeper. <laughs> yeah, sounds like a keeper. But you know what? Uh, I mean, look, man. I, I think the Knicks they need to just like the Cam thing. They need to to widen the player development, you know, process a little bit and try to just see if they could bring some diamonds in the rough. Like, I, you know, in the past they they're just looking for plug and play guys, and that's fine. That's that's cool because they have some value there and quickly certainly established himself. And, and Grimes had his moments, and even McBride to a certain extent. But uh, you know, they they may need to to see if they find some, some a diamond in the rough somewhere because it, it's just so hard to find that guy. You, you just never know, man. But you think the Knicks are in the you think the Knicks are in the position to do that, CP? Hey, when you got vet leadership like Julius Randle, yeah. you know, to, to, to steer Gigi, I mean. <laughs> well, look, man. Right, give me up out of here. <laughs> listen, they, listen, they, 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 the G League um, framework seems to be pretty tight. Like I said, you got Jaron Jackson Jr. down there. You got the Zion yeah. Jop as the head coach. You know, I had some conversations with those guys. They, you know, seems like a pretty thorough process, tight chip that they're running down there. Who, who, you know, who knows? Obviously, the Cam thing flopped, but, you know, like, is Trevor Keels ever going to develop into anything? No. I mean, to take a fly on somebody like this, this guy looks like a bucket. Just got to get his mind right. You know? Trevor, Trevor Keels is actually a pretty good lesson for a lot of these guys. Like, this is, another, this is a guy who needed that second year of college. Mm. You know, he came out too early. He probably had guys in his ears like go pro, like you know, like yeah. he he had that he had the game to open the season up at Madison Square Garden. The lights were bright, you know, like right. he, he performed. The executives will remember that. But man, when when you're in the NBA, you ain't competing with whoever's gonna you know at South Carolina is gonna go be an, an accountant after this. You know, you, you mm -hmm. gotta be better than Jason Tatum and <laughs> Jimmy Butler and you know all these dudes and the bar is high right now man the, the bar is high is there you know a couple of years in a row now there's there's been that like that super riser up into the lottery your guy pat williams was one of those guys a couple of years ago is there another guy like that this year uh this year it, it seems like it's going to be bilal Kulabali from uh victor Wembanyama's teammate from uh, oh. mets 92 um i mean he he was a guy who started out playing on the junior team uh, dominated down there, came up and has been balling out, including in the playoffs where he's really hitting his stride. I mean, he's 18 years old. I think he'll be 18 on draft night. Like he's rumored to be six eight in shoes with a seven two wingspan. Um, he he wasn't at the combine because his season is still going on. But man, if you watch this kid on the court, 
he is smooth, man. I mm. mean, the Euros, like he's gliding on the court. He got he's got skates on. You know, the, it's it's just he moves like the way a basketball player is supposed to move. He plays defense. Uh, I think the shot is okay in spot up situations, but the pull up stuff is going to take a little bit of time. But I, there's a lot of rumors now that you know he could be, you know, locked into a floor at OKC at 12. Wow, uh, a, a lot of people think, getting a guy like that. Yeah, a lot of people think that he won't even make it there. Wow. Um, and this is a guy who you know was probably more in that 20 to 25 range uh, about a month ago. So right now he's the hottest name in the draft, um, and it would not shock me if you know Orlando at six you know, drafted him, you know, something like that. And everyone's like, who, who's this guy? Mm. And then, you know, you start seeing the highlights and realize he's Victor's teammate. Um, but when you see him on the court, you, you understand why this kid is getting the hype that he he's getting because he's, he's legit. Like he could hoop. Mm. Kid, kid's got some springs, man. The very, very interesting indeed. Um, shout out to our guy, big surge, big surge has been, Going in on the chat right now, uh, three-month franchise channel member, man. So we thank Big Surge for his support. He says, Corey, uh, he's asking rather, Corey, what are your thoughts on either Dariq Whitehead or Leonard Miller? Dariq Whitehead, <laughs> Leonard Miller, your thoughts. Damn, got me out here. Sound like a hater on this show, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dariq is a guy who had a lot of hype coming into the year. A lot of people had him in yeah. that top five range. He's a Montverde guy. You know, Scotty Barnes, Cade Cunningham's teammate. Five years played on, on at Montverde as an eighth grader. Um, and he just had a nightmare season at Duke. You know, mm. he was injured to start the year. Came back, really struggled really really struggled um was unplayable hurt himself again came back now he he knocked down open shots so he shot 40 percent from three uh was in the 80s from the line but all the stuff that he showed off the bounce in high school that people were excited about was a disaster uh he wasn't that good defensively um i thought his playmaking every now and then he showed some flashes uh, so, you know, I'm, I, I'd be more optimistic about that than the numbers indicate. But he's just a guy who also very young, one of the younger players in the draft. But, you know, he's one of these guys that I think when you look at the hype and what he was expected to be based on his senior season and you realize, all right, he might not be able to be that in the NBA. And if he's not that, can he be the guy who is just OK catching and shooting, maybe, you know, cutting off ball, you know, playing defense? If he's willing to do that, I think he's got a, a pretty good chance of being a role a good role player because he's got good um, you know physical measurements. You know he's like six six with a six ten six eleven wingspan. He's thick. Again, he's young. Um, I, I think he's a little bit more athletic than he showed this year at Duke. Although you know it, the athletic kind of numbers are were pretty rough. You know he only had two dunks this year, but again he dealt with injuries. So. Uh, he's a guy that I think at the right spot, I, I would understand a team taking a shot on, you know, the 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 pre draft hype that he had um, and the shooting stroke at his position. Leonard Miller is a guy that, you know, I, I'll, you, either have, seconds. you either have him in the lottery or you have him, you know, back towards the end of the first round. Some people love him. He's 6'10", 7'2", wingspan. Last year, he played at the uh, the Combine, and he was a disaster. He came from Canada, where he was like this weird point guard, jumbo wing guy. Um, this year, he played much more uh, of an energy role, you know, rim running, crashing the board. My comparison for him is like low-end Julius Randle. So if you mm. just want to run that, if you want to run that back, yeah. you know, like you can run it back with him. Um, but... He was really productive in the G League. You know, he was like 18 and 10, something like that, 17 and 10. Really turned it on the last uh, month of the season. And uh, he's a young guy who, who was, this was really his first high level basketball experience. And he played well. Now, he can't shoot a lick. His, <laughs> his, like his form is trash. Um, he's, you know, and I don't know if it's going to be able to be reworked, uh, mm. you know, but he, uh, he's a guy who can dribble. At 6'10", you know, he can pass a little bit. And, again, he plays hard. So I think he's going to find a place in the league. Um, it wouldn't shock me if he, you know, goes earlier than I personally would take him. 
uh, especially having played for the Ignite and, you know, in a situation where all these teams are scouting those games a little bit more intently than some of the other G League games. Mm -hmm. But um, not my cup of tea, but, you know, I wouldn't hate somebody else, you know, liking him a lot. Interesting. It looks like a, looks like a, uh, a new age stroll mile swift. You know, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's not bad. Stroll mile joint. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah, that was my guy. Uh, he was nasty and live too. 